Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. Today we will begin with the module of thermal design. To understand thermal design, first uh, we have to know the different power losses that take place in power electronic converters. The main power loss that take place in power electronic converters is because of semiconductor devices. And you might be already familiar, there are two types of it. One is your conduction loss and second is your switching loss. Now, uh, let us recall the buck converter circuit. So, in buck converter uh, you had a switch. So, here the semiconductor device losses uh, will be taking place in this MOSFET and also in the diode. But apart from this what we see is that that the converter also have got this L which is the uh, magnetics. So, that will also have its own loss. So, magnetics losses. So, they also contribute to the total loss and uh, there are two types of it. One is your core loss and the second is your copper loss. Now, both of these uh, co core loss and copper loss we will be discussing when we discuss magnetics design. Then we what we see is that uh, there is C as well capacitance. So, uh, we have uh, whatever these uh, passive elements that we have got, these uh, will have their own series resistance which is called as the ESR effective series resistance and they will have their own I square R losses. So, uh, what we can say is that, that different passive elements in any power electronic converter like your L, C and whatever others may be there, their ESR which is your effective series resistance these also contribute to the total loss in the form of I square R losses. Apart from this, these converters are realized by designing PCBs, printed circuit boards and uh, those PCB traces will also have their own ESRs and that will also lead to I square R losses. Apart from there, there may be drivers and uh, different ICs may be there in any converter. Uh, and uh, uh, several uh, sensing circuits may be there which might be having uh, their own passive elements. So, all of them will have some loss which will be mostly in the form of I square R losses. So, different elements in your converter miscellaneous elements in your converter they also contribute to the total loss taking place in any converter. Now, all these loss this power loss that finally occur in the form of heat. The heat of the device and that leads to rise in temperature. Because of which what happens is that, that uh, if we exceed the temperature which is uh, the maximum limit that is specified in the data sheets of different devices, then that may damage the device. So, we always have to ensure that we do cooling and uh, we do cooling in such a way that the maximum temperatures of 
different devices are not exceeded. Now when now we discussed your semiconductor devices at that time I had uh, shown you that most of the data sheets they give the junction temperature. So the maximum junction temperature that, that the device can withstand the power semiconductor device can withstand. So then uh, that is something should not be exceeded and for that cooling has to be done the devices have to be cooled. Now all these uh, other uh, different kinds of losses that we are seeing magnetic loss and passive loss this uh, we will not uh, be discussing here. Uh, we will be mainly discussing the loss that takes place in your semiconductor devices, your conduction loss and switching loss and how can we cool the semiconductor device that is what we are going to discuss. So, this is your familiar buck converter circuit. So, let us see the conduction loss first. Now, uh, these are the waveforms uh, that uh, we have discussed uh, before in the very first module and there uh, we had seen that, that this is a diode, this is the voltage waveform that appears across the diode. So, when the switch is on that means for your this time period the DTS the switch is on and at that time for an ideal device the voltage across the device will be 0 and at that time the diode blocks and so then the V in is the voltage that is going to appear across the diode. And uh, when this uh, switch turns off at that time this diode conducts. Now ideally there will not be any voltage um, across the diode when it is conducting but in reality there will be. And let us say there is some this small voltage drop which is your uh, VD on we can say that and we can also associate it with uh, on state resistance and we can call it as let us say RD on. Similarly, for the switch as well, for the MOSFET as well, there will be some little on state voltage drop, we can call it as VDS on and uh, there is on state resistance also of MOSFET, this we had discussed before, it is call it as RDS on as the on state resistance. Now, this is the switch current. And uh, then when the switch does not conduct uh, it is 0. Now uh, in reality there will be some small leakage current but it is usually so small that uh, we can ignore it for loss calculation purpose. And this is the diode current uh, where when the diode is not conducting it is 0 and uh, when the diode conducts this is the current that flows through the, the diode. Now we can write the expressions for uh, the conduction loss. So, this is your total time period T s and corresponding to that the switching frequency is F s. So, we can write the conduction loss that takes place when the switch is on. that will be 1 by Ts 0 to Dts Isw square T R D S on Dt. So, what we observe from this expression is that this conduction loss takes place that means when the device is conducting that is what is your conduction loss. And the main thing which is responsible for the conduction loss is a small voltage drop that appears across the device while it is conducting. So, those two multiplied then will have some loss uh, because of it and we can write either it has uh, the multiplication of the on state voltage drop and current or we can also write it form of I square R losses. So, that is what uh, if we integrate this uh, current. So, the square of it multiplied by R D S on in the interval 0 to D T S and divided by 1 by T S. So, that is the conduction loss that will be taking place 
for one switching time period. Now similarly, we can write for the diode also. So, the diode conduction loss will be P D cond if we represent it like that, it will become 1 by T S and this is going to be integrated from D T S to T S because diode conducts from D T S to T S time interval I square D T R D on D T. Now, here we have to multiply it with the diode on state resistance and not the MOSFET on state resistance. The further if we want to uh, simplify those expressions that uh, we just wrote for conduction losses of the MOSFET and the diode, uh, we have to recall that the switch current in the diode current actually is formed from the inductor current. So, this uh, waveform this we had discussed before your inductor current waveform shape uh, you might remember. So, this is the shape of the inductor current and this is equal to I s w equal to I l when it is conducting and I d equal to I l when diode is conducting. So, then um, we can use the inductor expression. So, we can write this inductor expression I L as equal to delta I L by D T S T plus I L 0. Now, what is this I L 0? So, this 1 is your I L 0 and then whatever is this change in current the ripple that is delta I L and of course, we know that this is the time period D T S. Now, this holds true for the interval D T S from 0 to D T S and this average I L we can write it as delta I L by 2 plus I L 0 what is uh, capital I L this also you might recall this is the average I L that we can write here. Now, further if we write this uh, the same conduction loss of the switch and try to solve it this is from 0 to D T S. So, if we substitute for I s w, so this will become further we can solve it. So, what you will be getting is So, this is what you will be obtaining and uh, now further if you solve it what you will be obtaining it as d times delta I L square by 3 plus delta I L into I L 0 plus I L 0 square multiplied by R d s on. Now, 
if we square this term, so that is your I L square that um, you can write it as I L by square by 4 plus delta I L into I L 0 plus I L 0 square. So, what we see here is that this term is uh, almost equal to I L square approximately equal because here this is uh, by 3 I L square by 3 and this is I L square by 4. So, approximately we can uh, equate it and so we can write this as uh, d I L square into R d S on. So, from uh, this what we see is that, that this P S W conduction loss the switch conduction loss in the simple way we can write it as equal to uh, the duty ratio multiplied by the average of the square of the inductor current and multiplied by the on state resistance of the MOSFET. Similarly, we can also write for the diode the conduction loss as uh, P D cond is equal to 1 minus D I L square R D on. Now, let us look into the switching loss. Switching loss obviously from the name uh, your it takes place when the device is switching that is while it is turning on and while it is turning off. So, these waveforms uh, we had seen before for uh, any switching device usually what we have seen mostly for transistors uh, and even for diodes also what we saw is that during the turn on process first the current increases and it increases to almost uh, to the on state value. At that time the switch voltage does not change and uh, after that the switch voltage slowly uh, it uh, uh, this reduces and it becomes close to the on state voltage drop. And these two intervals are the main intervals in which the switching loss takes place. So, this interval is uh, called as your TRI the rise in current interval and this is the fall in voltage interval. So, TFV we can write it as and the total of these the sum of these two is the on state interval. So, this uh, VSW the switch voltage uh, uh, it depends on uh, what it is going to be during the off state, but uh, for buck converter it will be equal to V in or if we have an edge bridge converter it will be equal to VDC. And here uh, this will be equal to your uh, the on state current and let us call that as equal to IS capital ISW. So, then if we want to know the loss we have to multiply the current and the voltage. So, here we have multiplied the current and the voltage. So, this is the instantaneous power curve for on state loss so PSW on. So, what we see is that, uh, uh, that this is like a triangle. So, here the this peak will be equal to V D C multiplied by I S W. So, this is your V D C into I S W and the area under this triangle will be the, the loss that will be taking place the energy loss. And if you take the average of it then um, you get the turn on loss the average turn on loss over one switching time period. Similarly, for turn off same thing first the voltage builds up and we name this interval as TRV and in the next interval when the voltage has uh, built up close to the blocking voltage then the current falls and we can call it as TFI and the sum of these two intervals is your mainly your the turn off interval. 
Okay. Now, uh, you uh, may getting may be getting confused uh, with uh, the device characteristics that we had studied when we discussed devices in great detail that there were some other intervals also that were present. But know that for switching loss uh, estimation, uh, we are simplifying it. We are only taking those intervals which contribute to majorly to the switching losses. So, again if we have to uh, plot this uh, uh, pow instantaneous power at turn off. So, this is also be again uh, be like a triangle and here this peak will be equal to again same VDC into ISW and this area under this triangle will be the energy loss that will be taking place during turn off. So, if we have to write the expressions for turn on the on state switching loss uh, was uh, rather the, the, the turn on switching loss PSW on will be given as equal to half of VDC ISW T on divided by the, the switching time period 1 by T s. So, we can write it as uh, VDC ISW T on F s by 2. Similarly, for the turn off switching loss also, we can write it as VDC ISW T off into F s by 2. And the total switching loss PSW for one switching time period will be given by VDC ISW T on plus T of F s by 2. So, this is what is the total switching loss that we obtain and uh, this is a very simple expression which you can use it for a simple converter like a buck converter. So, where uh, you have the bus voltage or the input voltage and then is your uh, whatever is your ISW current that you are going to get. You can also take the average current sometimes to simplify further and then you have the T on plus T off and the switching frequency divided by 2 that will give you the estimate of the switching losses. So, this uh, um, graph I had shown you before also. This has been uh, taken from the application manual from Semicron where uh, they are showing the, uh, the turn on loss of an IGBT with uh, your anti parallel diode in it. And uh, for your edge bridge converter you uh, may recall when uh, one IGBT is turning on at that time and the diode is uh, turning off. So, that is your this IGBT and here you have the diode. So, this diode turns off this diode turns off when this IGBT is turning on. So, this this uh, diode turn off loss is all is, is shown here. Uh, the diodes voltage is uh, uh, you are building up and your current is becoming 0 whereas, here the IGBT is turning on. So, IGBT's current is building up and the voltage is reducing. So, this is the turn on loss and this is the turn off loss of the diode. So, what we see is that the diode loss is much smaller than the IGBT loss. So, that is why many times your uh, when power loss calculations are done you especially your switching loss calculation then the diode switching losses are ignored. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are your main loss that um, take place in your power electronic converters are your power semiconductor device losses. Apart from that there also there will be other losses because of the magnetics and several other passive elements and I square R losses taking place in different elements of the converter. 
and uh, your power semiconductor device losses that is uh, is of uh, two types one is your conduction loss and second is your uh, switching loss and conduction loss is because of the on state voltage drop across the device and switching loss is because of the turn on and turn off when both the currents and voltages are high together for some amount of time thank you Thank you.